So I'll call the the May 11, is May 11, 2016 meeting of the North Bennington Graded School Prudential Committee to order 7:02 p.m. And uh, I we haven't been doing this, but I think we ought to introduce ourselves. So starting with John, John Bullock, Ray Molino, Tim Schrader. And Lori Elwell, our clerk. Um, so uh, let me get to the agenda here. Public comments. Pete, you want to say something? I do. Um, Pete Niles, and I'm from the Village School. And in one of our many meetings, uh, we have discussed with our Act 46 updates. We've discussed, we think it would be a, a good idea if um, you can have some public meetings to get more word out about Act 46 because it's, um, I mean, we're kind of involved in it and we, we, don't, we don't get it much. You know, we, we stab at it, but we don't really get it. So, I mean, if you can get five people to come that's yeah. That's more than we got. Right. You know, I just I, you, know, you get what you get in the paper, and that's fuzzy. Well, you know Bruce Learman, so yep. um, maybe we could. There's a meeting of that group tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Maybe we could talk to them about being the organizer. Um, can they do that because it's, it's... Sure. Okay. Yeah. They're not spending any money and they're not making any proposals. Yeah. Yeah. Other than thinking, hypothetical. And I mean, I don't, I know at, at the floor meeting, Bruce, he really did a good job. Yeah. I'm not sure we need to get into that, you know, just more right. or less a, a coffee talk type of thing. If they've got questions, do the best you can to answer them. I don't, I don't, I don't envision any big long program or anything, but just... No, but it would, might be useful to try to get people to come in and yeah. listen to it a little bit, get some, stir some thinking. Yeah. Or some concern. Yeah, and I, I mean, chances are, it's, you know, like, like most meetings, Nobody shows up and then complains <coughs> after the fact, but <clears throat> at least you tried. Right. The process requires trying, I guess. So um, we thank you for the comment. I I believe you're essentially correct. Um, I wish we had a proposal to talk about, but we yeah. don't yet, and uh, because of various relationships in the districts that we are allied with here mm -hmm. and uh, the complexity of the legislation, complexity of what you can and can't do, uh, it's difficult to come up with proposals if you're a, a district that's doing things a little bit differently. From, well, as a non-operating district, we are from the other districts that surround us. <clears throat> Just to clarify, are the, are the Act 46 meetings that are being held uh, open to the public, or are they more or less Oh, they're, they're yeah. open, yeah. So it could just be a matter of and announcing the, those the are getting the word out. <coughs> yeah, yeah. The meeting tomorrow is at 7, is it? 7 here. Right, in this library, which is where we are, the North Bennington Grade School Library. Um, it's, they're, they're open. Uh, anybody can come who's a member, you know. You don't even have to be a member of this community, really. <coughs> but it's a, you're welcome. And uh, uh, we have uh, Bruce Lehrman is a very good leader because he's he's been studying this pretty dil diligently. So um, promo for the ad hoc Act 46 study committee. Now we'll move on to 
finance, I think the budget status report and the treasurer's report were in your your documents. I don't really see a need to go over them. Uh, the consent agenda. Um, I would entertain a movement to accept the. They consist. The consent agenda consists of the April 13th meeting minutes and current warrants for May. Uh, and I would entertain a motion to accept these. A second. Oh. A second. Okay. We'll let Laurie <laughs> say <serve> that. <laughs> um, there is one correction in the minutes, which. Um, is that well, where are they? Minutes. Minutes. I'll just point it out. In the first item, it says, I said we, meaning this district, are interested in operating, operating a pre K through six and becoming a seven twelve choice. I may have used those words foolishly, but I actually meant that we're interested in maintaining ourselves as a non-operating district and in addition becoming a 712 choice district. So that needs to be corrected because uh, that's the accurate version of what was being talked about, I believe. And with that provision, I guess uh, we call the question. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to vote. Aye. Okay. Um, next. Um, where is the agenda again? Okay. So uh, I think it's policies. So, John, shall we warn 5200 fundraising <laughs> policy? Uh, yeah, the, the that is very simple. There's one added line in that about uh, any fundraising has to comply with uh, federal, state, and local laws. Yeah. Um, so I don't think <coughs> that's what we would have to do anyway, even yeah. if we didn't say it. Um, so sure, let's. Uh, I would recommend we go ahead and warn that one. So your that's your motion. Sure, I'll, I'll move that we warn. And we need a second. I'll second. All right. And uh, I'm going to assume there's no discussion, so I'll call the question. All in favor of warning policy number 5200 uh, regarding fundraising in SDSU schools? Aye. 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 B is 4261, policy 4261, substitute teachers. Do you have, do you have any issues with that? Well, this doesn't really affect the village school. It's, um, yep. so I would, I, don't have any interest in holding it up, so I would uh, recommend we warn it. No, we, we've already warned it. Oh, so I recommend we adopt it. Yeah. All right. So I'll move that we. John's moving that we adopt 4261 mm -hmm. policy on substitute teachers. Yeah. I'll second. Thank you, Tim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Policy number 5145, condom availability. Uh, this one's a tough one. Um, I've struggled with this one. But I, my, what I'm going to do is uh, vote against this uh, policy, partly because I'm not convinced uh, that it will be, I, I don't think there's enough in there to convince me that's going to be implemented consistently or properly. Too much is left up to the discretion of administrators. Um, so based on those concerns, and I think for the there's a potential that it could do more harm than good, I would err on the side of caution and not support it. Are you, do you think there are changes that should be proposed to it? Um, it does it have administrative regs now? No. And the administrative regs on the basis, this policy is individualized. So it would be by district or school? By school. By school. Well, although, I, let me double check that. Um, I don't want to misspeak on that one. But I think it's, um, 
I think it's by district. But again, that would be the middle school and the high school, so there's no... Right. Uh, so that's actually one, yeah. one set of administrative regs. Um, I don't think the, the policy committee talked this through enough. It was only at one meeting. I wasn't even at that meeting. Uh, the minutes were incomplete, so I'm, because I don't know enough about it, I'm not going to recommend you pass it or approve it. Okay. Yeah, reading through it <clears throat> does not seem like a good policy to me. Well, it doesn't even seem like much of a policy. Now, there's far too much unstated there that can be changed over time with personnel. Yeah. Um, it's, it, the policy seems to be like every at every single le available level, somebody can make a decision without any real guidance. It says appropriate counseling will be provided by specifically trained and designated faculty staff. I have no idea what that means. Right. Appropriate? Um, and now that'll, decides, be, that'll go in the administrative regs, but who decides what's appropriate? Who decides what's appropriate? Yeah. And the governing boards have to deem it appropriate. Um, well, you know, typically we don't see the administrative regs. The, um, Although you can look them up. You can look them up. Produced. That said, they, I think there's a movement within the policy committee to try to make the administrative regs readily available yes. uh, by many, or appending them to the, uh, the policies. But they're not written yet for this, <coughs> yeah. um, and they are subject to change. So they, in effect, are the substance of this policy. Right. Um, and therefore, it seems to require that they be produced for you know, people to have that. Right, to know what this it means. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. yeah, this whole policy seems to state that individual schools can do whatever they want. Right. And that's not really a policy. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, Leon emphasized that at the SDSU meeting, that it was individualized that way, as a virtue. And um, this is, a, this is an so. SU-wide policy that yeah. uh, the condoms shall be made available. Uh, so if, if the, the regs are school by school or district grad, there's still not enough information to know how it's going to be implemented. So mm -hmm. given that. OK, so you think some of these, uh, the wide openness of it needs to be closed off by administrative regs. For instance, we're not going to adopt a policy, so uh, I don't, yeah, okay. So um, that could be your uh, takeaway to give back to the policy committee. And I think the thing for us to do is to table it and um, allow our concerns to be expressed and see what comes around. Is that okay with everybody? I'd be happy to do that. Okay. We're tabling now. Okay. Uh, the next agenda item is Act 46, but I'm not, I'm going to, uh, I think we've had our Act 46 discussion. Uh, I'm not going to <coughs> talk about this now because uh, I'm not fully prepared for this and we're short two members. So I think we'll just hold off and uh, see what we have to say in June. And meanwhile, through the uh, ad hoc committee work with them and the SU committee. Superintendent re attendance report, the superintendent is not here and I don't expect him based on an email I received this afternoon because uh, there are some things he needs to discuss in Shaftesbury. Chair's report. Uh, okay. I had a few things to run over. Um, there, the uh, Vermont Arts Exchange is working with the sixth grade class. They, we annually have a uh, 
sixth grade class generally does a give back gift to the, to the school and um, they've been working on this idea which um, well I could, I could go pull it out of the classroom and show you but uh, I, I won't <laughs> um, of a cover for the uh, manhole cover for the the drywall out front and um, the idea is developed into a play kind of a bench to play checkers on or to sit on whatever that could be removed to get to the uh, concrete cap below um, and they wanted to use the left leftover lumber from the uh, cap rail on the playground uh, bench around the perimeter of the playground to to make this out of so the request was that we allow them to have it, it turns out that there aren't that many boards. In fact, I don't think there are enough boards to do the, the idea that they have. And um, my sense looking at the cap rail is that it might be wise to hang on to a board or two for replacements if that com becomes necessary. Um, because this was, uh, you know, this is a South American hardwood that's quite weather durable, but um, you know it has life, and um, it'll be difficult to replace one board. So uh, I think I'm going to have to talk to Matt at BAE about this and uh, see if we can't come up with an alternative. Okay. So how many boards do they need? Well, it's got to be about 48 inches wide. It's going to be circular, so it's 48 right. inch diameter. Right. And uh, the boards are milled at five and a quarter inches. Okay. So, and you need a certain lineal footage mm -hmm. with some extra in order to cut. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I'm pretty sure there's not enough there. So. I think. A rethink is in, in order. Mm -hmm. The issue, of course, is that you don't want to get it too complicated because kids are going to help produce it. So I guess I will talk to Matthew about that. They were cutting and measuring wood today. I don't know what wood they were. Yeah, cutting. that that was for the base. There's a a uh, octagonal. You no, know, maybe it's hexagonal. The angle, included angles seem to be more of a hex. And <clears throat> so they were going to build that. I have no idea what the construction is, and I probably ought to check into that. Because <laughs> it's got to be durable. It's got to sit there. The pressure treat will sit on the ground okay. Mm. But um, the joinery has to hold up to uh, abuse, or at least hard use. So uh, the second thing is that point I needed to bring up was with respect to Act 46. At the last SDSU meeting, um, the board reached an agreement that we ought to expand the Act 46 study committee um, and in order to get more community input. So. Um, and we also ought to include Mount Anthony Union District because they are really integral to the process too, it seems to us. So that resolution was passed and that means <coughs> North Bennington has one more seat at the table and um, it should be a community member and my suggestion uh, is that we appoint Bruce Learman if, and I'm sure he'll accept that. I, don't think, did I ask him? Maybe I failed to ask him, I'm not sure, but uh, I think he'll accept it if we offer it to him. And um, so if someone would make that motion, uh, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I'll move to 
that. Second. All right. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then the third item, final item really, is that I have is that uh, we need to uh, arrive at uh, the tuition agreement with the village school governing FY17. Now, last year we had a pretty much knockdown, drag out fight, but we ultimately came up with a, an agreement that uh, we could accept and which just had a fill in the blank character. It's a, it's a model or a, uh, a form. And so the only real issues this year are changing the fiscal year, uh, putting in the number of students that we based the initial calculations for the first one, two, three payments uh, until we have an actual student count and um, the tuition rate, which was the rate voted on by the community uh, in the March annual meeting. <coughs> so um, I proposed, Tom proposed to me, Tom Martin proposed to me that we have a, a meeting next week and I propose that we do it by email because it seems pretty cut and dry. So that's the way I'm proceeding. And, um, yeah, if that agreement is working with them, I don't see why we would go through that process again. That was the whole point last year. Maria was very strong on that point, <laughs> and uh, uh, I believe that's what we what we have now. Is we have a, 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 a forum agreement that we can continue using until there's reason to change it. So, um, I think maybe next week we'll have this. Um, if that if it's okay with you, you could authorize me to. I think I'm already authorized, but we might as well authorize <coughs> me to execute it when it's ready. I am a signatory for the board, there. so I'll entertain that resolution. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And. Um, don't know that I have anything else unless it rattles around comes out the cup in the next five seconds which I'm not believing it's going to um, I, I we have an executive session on this agenda and it should be short about a student matter so um, I think um, if I, I'll entertain an adjournment motion, or I actually um, a motion to go in the executive session. Some student matter. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Nice.